Well, welcome to Training Tuesday, everyone. I am Heidi Reese, Training Programs Manager here at Dayton Superior, and I'm sitting alongside Chuck Hope, our National Training Manager. Say hi, Chuck. Oh, everybody. <laughs> we just want to go over a couple of things before we get started with our presenter. So everyone who has called in is muted, but I want you to still ask questions throughout the presentation and definitely at the end, we'll have a mini question and answer session. You can do that through putting it in to the chat functionality in Zoom. I've actually created a Ask Your Training Tuesday question here, so that goes to my computer that's watching it, and uh, I will get those questions asked for you and we'll get you the answers. At the um, end, then we can have that question answer session, like I said. As a reminder, each of these webinars are recorded and placed on the Dayton Superior YouTube channel, as well as our DaytonSuperior.com website. Just search for Training Tuesday, you'll find two links, one to register and the other for a listing of the most current Training Tuesdays with the ability to go by category. I just changed the website. I hope you like it where you can find the precast and the tilt up, splicing whatever you want and just click on that icon and you will be at those particular training Tuesdays. So like normal, let's go through and just state that this presentation is intended for training purposes only. Any technical specifications, the products mentioned in this training, please refer to DaytonSuperior.com and you can find those technical data sheets, safety data sheets, all the things about the product uh, to keep you safe. So who is Dayton Superior? We are your leading provider in the concrete construction industry. Uh, we have Simons Forming Shoring, Concrete Repair and Restoration, Bridge Debt, Rebar Splicing, Precast like we're going to talk about today, and Tilt Up Construction. We've got those chemical solutions that are formulated to meet the design specifications that you need for your project in both new and retrofit repair needs. And along with the largest, most experienced engineering and sales team in the industry, we do offer world-class customer care and 24-hour ordering and account status information through our e-commerce site. So talk to your sales representative if you're interested in that. My point here in the slide is to tell you we are not just about precast like you're gonna see today, but we are your one-stop shop with all the biggest portfolio out there for you to meet your needs. All right, so who is with us today? We're gonna to be discussing another of the precast systems called Utility Anchors. And to teach us about that system and its applications is our Director of Business Development for Precast, Mr. Adam Stenberg. So Adam has 17 years of experience within precast engineering and sales, and he is a licensed professional engineer. He has a Bachelor of Civil Engineering degree from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities Institute of Technology. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and within Dayton Superior, he has been a technical sales engineer, project and design engineer, and is currently, like I said, our Director of Business Development for Precast. And he's here to teach us all about Utility Anchor. So Adam, go ahead and take it away for us. Awesome. Hey, thank you, Heidi, for the introduction and uh, to you and Chuck for putting together such a, a great presentation. Uh, Dayton Superior developed the utility anchor system back in the year 2000 with the goal of eliminating special uh, lifting hardware. This greatly simplifies the lifting and handling of precast elements. And like, like said, there's no need for special proprietary lifting hardware. You can use standard shackles and hooks. The utility anchor system is used primarily as a lifting anchor, but it's very simple and versatile to use. So it can be used in a lot of other applications as well, like pulling irons, safety tie-offs, um, and when it's used in the lifting applications, it's used most commonly for picking uh, precast elements off of their formwork, lifting and handling those pieces in a job site uh, at a yard or on a job site for loading trucks, and, and also for the final installation of that product in the field. These anchors range um, widely in capacities and go all the way up to 24,000 pounds safe working load with our heaviest duty. P75 utility anchor. Um, all these anchors have a four to one factor of safety built into the loading tables um, that are that you can find online in the precast handbook or um, through the technical data sheets also found online. 
there are several installation uh, formers, void formers associated with this product line. Um, we have urethane ones that are reusable as well as single use disposable ones as well. And with this system being so easy to use and cost effective, it really eliminates the need for using through holes or rebar for lifting precast elements, um, as well as the need for patching those holes or cutting cutting rebar after the fact. It's, it's really a cost effective solution for your lifting needs. So here I'll highlight quickly, uh, we'll do a quick review on the benefits. Like we mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a very versatile system. It can be used in a wide variety of applications for different precast structures and precast elements. Um, it's really easy to use for removing formwork or for stripping precast from its pouring beds, uh, moving around yards, loading, unloading, and bringing to job sites. There's no need for any special lifting hardware with any of the anchors in this system, um, and it utilizes standard hooks and clevises. Here we highlight a few of the special lifting hardware that are no longer needed or required with this system. Um, these are all Dayton Superior products. Uh, we have some here that are used with coil lifting inserts. We also have some that are used with our swift lift system and our fleet anchor system. Getting into the application of this system, uh, here we show the proper hardware installation. Um, on the left, you can see a shackle. Uh, both of these situations are a shear lift or pull. Um, and it's very important that you have your shackles orientated in this direction for a shear lift. Um, and a hook, it's very important that you attach your hook in this manner when you're pulling or lifting these um, utility anchors in, in shear. And we'll get in a little bit further into some more do's and don'ts about um, the orientation of the anchors and how to engage um, hooks and shackles and to make sure that you're doing that properly. Here is a layout of the, the overall systems and components within this system. The main anchor that we carry is a P75, the utility anchor. It's, it's a V-shaped anchor. Um, we have several other anchors that also do not require any special hardware, and we'll review those as well. Um, but in this system, there are void formers, recess plugs, um, and those are, are carried in a 90 degree and a 45 degree recess. We also carry a single use um, disposable recess former. And then we have a cover patch here, the P76C, as well as a lot of attaching hardware to Depending on your application and how this is being used, you can use a holding plate, the holding rod, or even magnetic setting plugs or magnetic void formers if you're working with steel void, uh, steel form work. Here is the, the load capacity data. This is uh, straight from our technical data sheets in the precast handbook. Please note that the capacities listed in this handbook are safe working loads. Um, so they have a factor of safety of four to one built in, but they are also directionally dependent on the type of load you're applying to the anchor. So there is a tension load at 90 degrees, which would be if this anchor was poured into a flat slab as it looks right now, and the load is applied straight up and down. There's also a shear safe working load in here and this would be in and out of the page if this anchor were installed in this application. So it'd be like if you're pulling towards yourself out of the screen or, or pushing in, in towards the screen. Um, there's a lot of additional uh, great information in here with the minimum um, slab thicknesses, panel thicknesses, and geometric information as well. And another important thing to consider when, when reviewing the capacities on this anchor is that this table is all based off of 4,000 PSI concrete. Um, so if you have situations that fall outside of that, please reach out to your uh, Dayton Superior technical rep and we can help you um, ensure that you are lifting with adequate capacity. Uh, the minimum edge distances are also labeled in here. Um, so for example, um, I'll go back here for a second. 
this 8UA671 acre, this has 16 inch minimum edge distance. So if that anchor were installed into the side of a precast element and lifted uh, vertically in a shear pick, as this direction of pull is indicating, um, you'd have to have at least 16 in inches of edge distance in, in each of these um, criteria here to get that full capacity of what's in the handbook. If you get into situations where you have edge distances out, outside of these limits, Again, please reach out to our precast engineering technical line and we can uh, assist with getting you accurate capacities for those situations. So here is some, some don'ts. This is how we do not want to handle the utility anchor system. Um, specifically, the top two pictures here are box culverts or box manholes or rectangular structures. And this is how you do not want to handle it. The anchor should never be placed such that uh, the void former is perpendicular to the direction of the pull. Um, so these anchors are rotated uh, 90 degrees in the incorrect direction. So this can result in uneven loading, um, excessive force applied to the anchor through, through the anchor bending um, or the hook putting an ad additional prying force onto that anchor. And it will also engage the concrete and put some pressure on the hook where you can actually prematurely bend that hook and, and fail it there. So how we want to use the anchors, this is a better detail showing how you can align your anchors with your rigging point and your sling angles. You want to have the void former parallel to the direction of your pole. This is a, a correct shear pick with the utility anchor system um, in, in a rectangular structure. And on the bottom here, we have two additional details showing how to pick a slab, a rectangular or square slab with four point picks um, up to a center point, and then also a circular manhole cover or, or slab with a three point pick. See how there again, the void formers are rotated towards the direction of pull. So when you're using a, a hook or a shackle, it's very important that that hook is free to rotate within the system and that it can freely rotate around that anchor. It's It ensures that you're not going to get any um, prying or any other weird forces that will cause issues um, as shown over here. Here we have a hook that is too large for the anchor and it cannot fit and seat fully under the void or the uh, the anchor. So that will result in some additional prying forces um, and potential premature failure. So now we're gonna move over into the applications, some of the other products that go along with this system and how to install those. Uh, P76 is our urethane re reuse, reusable recess plugs. We offer five different uh, sizes with these. Um, we have 90 and 45 degree, um, for our 0.44 and 0.671 anchors, these are a reusable product that's made out of a, a high quality poly, polyurethane um, that's very durable and also resistant to chemical interactions. So here we have the details on the five um, reusable recess formers that we carry. The I should take a step back. We sell three different diameters of these anchors, um, 0.44 inch, 0.671, and 7 eighths. The 0.44 inch diameter anchors, we have a blue color on the void formers. The 0 0.671 inch diameter anchors are orange. And our extra heavy duty, very large seven eighths inch diameter um, utility anchor utilizes a blue void former. So here is the details of how to install this on formwork with a P101 holding rod. So if you have a steel form, a wood form, it doesn't really matter what the material or what this jig is, but if you have the ability to be able to drill through it or form holes through it, 
you can run this holding rod through the form that you're attaching it to and thread it into the void former. Once you do that, you can then back this secondary nut and tighten that up snug to the back of the form. So you're securing your whole anchor assembly tight to the form and holding it right where it needs to be. So that as you're pouring concrete, there's no movement in that void former or anchor. An additional holding uh, plate that we offer to secure this system to formwork is the P100 holding plate. Um, this has four no nail holes into it. So you can nail or screw this plate into wooden side form. Um, with it being a steel product, you could also weld it to formwork if it's something that you're going to be using many times. Um, you could also use an adhesive glue or, or double face sticky tape as well. So the details of what this looks like, again, you could um, screw this holding plate, this P100 holding plate to your side form or to a jig. Um, and then once you do that, the, the P76 has a recess cast into it that'll receive the plate and these, these pins. So then you can slide this P76 over that holding plate and it'll keep everything tight and secure where it needs to be. Um, so then the next day when you come to strip, you pull your side form off, um, you strip out your void former, and you're left with just the recess, or sorry, you're left with just the anchor in the concrete. A third application that is very frequent, especially in flat slabs, is mucking in an anchor or wet setting it. Um, so we recommend to use a P100 holding plate. This will ensure that the void former stays snug and tight to the anchor. Um, you can also put a piece of duct tape over this to ensure that no slurry gets into that void former and extend the life of that product. A um, couple of important things here. It's really important to make sure that as you install the anchor and the void former, you give it a little jiggle um, so that concrete will consolidate and uh, be properly around those anchors. Now, is that a jiggle or a jangle, Adam? <laughs> Either one, Heidi. <laughs> All right. Just check it. So then uh, you want to make sure that also these anchors are installed properly at 90 degree angles from your surface if you're using a 90 degree void former um, and that your void former is flush with the, the surface of the concrete. We offer disposable void formers that will operate in a very similar fashion to the urethane, but these are a single use product. Um, you cast in the concrete, you can actually leave, it's a two piece system. So it has a cover and then it has a internal um, former for creating that pocket. And this internal part can be left in. Um, so it, it's really looked at in a lot of ways as a, as a time saver for, for precasters because they only have to pop the cover off and then they can engage their hook and shackle and away they go. Um, again, with this product, we, we have two different sizes, one for the four, four, four inch anchors and another for the six, seven ones. We also carry utility anchors with clips. These clips are mounted to the anchors to secure it um, in place. And the, these clips can be attached to welded wire mesh for the reinforcing within a precast manhole or box culvert or pipe. Um, and they do a really good job of, of anchoring the product to the internal um, part of the pipe. There's a lot of variability here. We can make these clips as long as we want. So it matches up the, with the correct wire spacing for your project. And we can also adjust the height of where these clips are welded, depending on what the cover of your mesh is um, and the thickness of your, your overall product are. Some additional uh, anchors that we offer, here's the P73SL. This is a thin slab anchor. Um, key things here, again, this doesn't require any special rigging. It uses a standard hook or shackle. And it's it has a much smaller footprint than the utility anchor does. So it it's, can be utilized into some special applications where maybe the, the P75 wouldn't work as well for you. Um, it has a eyelet forged into it for receiving that hook. And then it also has a heat forged 
disc shaped foot for developing your concrete breakout columns and, and full capacity of that anchor. Magnetic setting products, we carry setting plates. This is the magnetic setting plate, this black portion here. It has magnets built into it. Um, and it works very similar to what our P100 holding plate does where it has a pin um, coming through the top of it. So you set the setting plate on the side of your form on the steel. Um, so the magnets will engage. And then you can place our standard P76 urethane void formers right onto the magnetic setting plate. And we also sell one piece magnetic re recesses um, that are a very clean option as well. They are very similar to our urethane void formers, but they have integral magnets built into them. With the versatility of the system, utility anchors can be used for a lot of things outside of lifting and handling. They can also be used for um, pulling irons or for fall arrest systems. Uh, here we show some details of that. It's it's very quick to do a connect, a quick connect and disconnect with safety lanyards, and these anchors have exceptional capacity. So again, you can reach out to a Dayton Superior Technical Rep to get get the capacities um, with the proper safety factors for your project. Another anchor that we have in this system, uh, again, doesn't require any special hooks, is the P75R retaining wall lifting anchor. This product is um, designed to be ex installed exposed to the concrete. So if we look at, for example, this one and a quarter inch anchor, it is designed to have two and a half inches exposed above the surface of the concrete um, with three and a half inches embedded below the surface. With that insulation and eight inch minimum edge distance, you'll get to 1600 safe working load capacity. It's a great product for for uh, for large bin blocks, retaining walls, but it's also um, an excellent option too for flat slabs um, as well. We carry a recess former that can be used with this as well. So if it's something where you cannot have an exposed anchor through the top of your concrete or through the surface of your concrete, you can utilize these P76Rs to recess them as well. And the last anchor within this system is our P110 wire rope lifting system. This is a very cost-effective solution. It, again, doesn't require any special hardware. It can be used in either a facelift or an edge lift. Um, and a lot of times these anchors are mucked in or wet set into the surface. Uh, the data sheet's available online for this. And an important thing to note is that in order to get to the full capacity of these anchors, um, it's required that you embed two thirds of the length of this anchor into concrete. Uh, but that data is all available online in our TDS and technical hand sheet. Uh, so now I will turn it back over to Heidi. The peanut gallery, right? Sorry, I couldn't <laughs> resist. So many things that I could be saying, I'm sure people don't wanna hear it all the time. <laughs> Jack's laughing. Okay, so before I start into these resources page, um, uh, go ahead and put in any questions that you may have for Adam here on the precast. Um, the resources, like I usually talk about, we do have the product pages. Adam just referred to our technical data sheets. They are all out there. So if you just search on what you want on our website on DaytonSuperior.com, you can search for, I don't know, like a P75 and, um, or P52. You're seeing that uh, swift lift chart right there. Um, although we're talking about utility, so whoops. But the point is, is that we have handbooks, we have guides, we have charts, we have certifications of compliance signed by Mr. Bill Drury, who is actually on the phone right now. Um, and we have all of that information on gamesuperior.com. In addition, I want to talk to you guys about a new engineering service that is now available as about a month. Um, and if you require detailed engineering questions, we can get you those answers that are precise quick, accurate, and detailed, uh, specifically around um, the coil inserts. Uh, if you have concrete areas of restricted clearances or atypical material properties used, we can help you out with that. The point here is that we have engineering services that can assist you with the questions that you need. 
um, they will utilize a calculator and get those results back to you. You can contact them through DaytonSuperior.com. There's a precast page where you can fill out and submit either a precast job information sheet or a technical assistance form. Um, in addition, the, we have the other engineering page with the, with the uh, phone numbers. So all of these services, you can call or put in a form um, onto our website and someone would get back to you as soon as they can to get you started with your question. So here's the technical assistance look and feel. In addition, can't talk um, without Chuck and I in the room. We have to talk about training. We have a new look and feel to the Training Tuesday website pages where they basically show you what's right, you know, for the month, but then they will revert you to wherever you want to go. So there's a precast page now is what I'm trying to get at. If you want past Training Tuesdays that are just precast centric, you can select on that and go straight to them and they're there organized on your behalf. And if you want more customized training, or in-house, virtual, you name it, you want Chuck to come and wear a clown costume, although he probably will be mad that I said that. <laughs> Just kidding. You can email us at training at DaytonSuperior.com. Contact information specifically around uh, if you need the technical service representative, whether they're Adam or Taylor, who you've heard from, Blankenship, um, in your area. You can find them by clicking on the regional maps for the Dayton Superior there. Um, you can also contact PrecastENG at DaytonSuperior.com. We've got so many ways for you to get in touch with us so we can assist you. So is there any questions, guys? I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so I'm going to give it just a little bit more. Heidi, there was one other thing I really wanted to mention, too. Like our, our domestic capabilities, um, we manufacture our P75s um, both domestically and, and import. Um, we offer them in a plain and finish. So the domestic capabilities that we offer on these products is a huge, a huge priority for us. And we're making those domestically in, in Tremont, Pennsylvania. So that's a really good thing to say. And, you know, we don't have it here. We're going to talk about it. And we have talked about in past training Tuesdays, the Build America, Buy America plan. And we, we have training Tuesday on that because, you know, any kind of government document is really convoluted, right? So we brought in our expert here, Sarah, to kind of go over that and what it means to our customers and how Dayton Superior is, uh, you know, making it easy on you. The point is that we have an interactive map now that if you need something that is made in the USA, uh, Build America, Buy America, you can find those products through that map. So uh, we have a flyer going on, like a banner on our website. Uh, just click there and get to it. And you can see what products Adam's talking about here for for precast in general. Any questions, guys, or any other comments, Adam? No, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, well, if you heard me talk about this, Baba, and you're like wanting to know more information, seriously, training at DaytonSuperior.com will get in touch with Chuck and myself, and we can get you to the right people if we can't answer the question. I um, want to remind you these are recorded. I'll send out a memo about it a little later on today. Thank you, Adam, for coming and letting me have the peanut gallery conversation with you. <laughs> and I appreciate it, seriously. And thank you all on the phone for um, coming to this training Tuesday and getting your knowledge on. Until next week, guys. I'll see you later.